To the people of the state of New York, the President of the United States is to be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States and of the militia of the several states when called into the actual service of the United States. The propriety of this provision is so evident in itself and it is at the same time so consonant to the precedents of state constitutions in general that little need be said to explain or enforce it. Even those of them which have in other respects coupled the chief magistrate with the council have for the most part concentrated the military authority in him alone. Of all the cares or concerns of government, the direction of war most peculiarly demands those qualities which distinguish the exercise of power by a single hand. The direction of war implies the direction of the common strength and the power directing and employing the common strength forms an usual an essential part in the definition of the executive authority. This is Alexander Hamilton, March 25th, 1788, New York Packet. The Federalist Paper Number 74. The Federalist Paper Number 74. Publius. He wrote as Publius. Who the hell wrote this? Publius. Well, we better publish it. I couldn't even get something published in the damn college paper. Let alone. Well, Publius wrote it. Maybe I should have just signed it Publius. The president may require the opinion in writing of the principal officer in each of the executive departments. The president may require the opinion in writing of the principal officer in each of the executive departments upon any subject relating to the duties of their respective offices. This I consider as a mere redundancy in the plan, as the right for which it provides would result of itself from the office. He is also to be authorized to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. Humanity and good policy conspire to dictate that the benign, that the benign prerogative of pardoning should be as little as possible, should be as little as possible fettered or embarrassed. That the benign prerogative of pardoning should be as little as possible fettered or embarrassed. The criminal code of every country partakes so much of necessary severity that without an easy access to exceptions in favor of unfortunate guilt, justice would wear a continence to sanguinary and cruel. As a sense of responsibility is always strongest in proportion, as it is undivided, it may be inferred that a single man would be most ready to attend to the force of those motives which might plead for a mitigation of the rigor of the law and least apt to yield to considerations which were calculated to shelter a fit object of its vengeance. The reflection that the fate of a fellow creature dependent on his sole fiat would naturally inspire scrupulousness and caution. The dread of being accused of weakness or connivance would beget equal circumspection, though of a different kind. On the other hand, as men generally derive confidence from their numbers, they might often encourage each other in an act of obduracy and might be less sensible to the apprehension of suspicion or censure for an injudicious or affected clemency. On these accounts, one man appears to be a more eligible dispenser of the mercy of the, of the, mercy of the government than a body of men. The expediency of vesting the power 